Did you know that you're on camera right now? Could you say hi? Hello to everyone watching. I'm here to help answer any questions or provide information you might need, so feel free to ask. Hope you're all having a great day. I'm listening. BMX is still in his infancy stage right now, so I would say that his code is probably ON or maybe ON to the power 2. Uh, maybe that's just, you know, like, maybe that's an indication that I probably need to make a better model. I'm pretty sure we all know who Baymax is, one of the main characters in uh, the Disney movie uh, Big Hero 6. Uh, built by Hiro Hamada's brother, Tadashi. And I've been a fan of that movie ever since I first saw it, actually. And I used to ask myself when I was younger, what would it be like to have a Baymax? Or what would it be like to build a Baymax? But then, as everything went on, keep in mind, like, this is when I was like 9 or 10 or something. But yeah. Everything went on, graduated elementary school, went on to high school, forgot about it. So then you may be asking like, well then, why now? Well, that kind of has to do with where I go to school now, the University of Waterloo. I joined the University of Waterloo sometime in September 2024 for Bachelor's in Applied Science Mechatronics Engineering, which is basically a mix of software, mechanical and electrical engineering which combines into some weird mix of robotics engineering uh, this degree in particular equips students with the ability to you know prototype design uh test different mechanical systems different electric systems electronic systems software systems another quirk of this degree is that it's also part of a co-op system so what is co-op i want you to think about it this way Co-op is basically um, a requirement of, of my degree that asks that I get uh, paid work throughout the duration of my of my completion of the degree. I basically need to get somewhat around two years of, of, of job experience in the field before I'm actually allowed to graduate. So that means that, yes, indeed, I do have to get stuff like internships. I do have to go through stuff like interviews and stuff. This is just to make sure that you come out of your of your degree as somewhat competent engineer and you're not just full of theory and not any practical knowledge backing it. It's kind of why they made it a requirement too. Like you can't exactly graduate without at least five co-op terms or two years of work experience throughout your whole engineering degree. Think of it as like a summer job that's kind of required by your degree to graduate if you don't you know graduate now seeing as this is an actual job that you have to take seriously you're gonna have to find a way to impress the employers that you're trying to you know get hired by and a few ways of doing that is either uh having job experience in the past obviously having some pretty good projects which we're about to talk about now or having some sort of experience in the field whether that be some student design teams or you helped a professor somewhere me being a high school student high school a levels me being a high school student i came out of that with like zero job experience working on projects and design teams was pretty much the only way i was gonna ever get these guys to look at my resume and so now we're here okay cool so now we have a plan that being work on design teams and come up with some projects so then the next question would be, what are you going to work on? Before deciding uh, what it is that you wish to make, you need to ask yourself, what is it that I'm actually interested in doing? And what is it that I can see myself working on in the future? As in like, what industry can I join? Whether it be mechanical, software, electrical, EDC. At the time during development of Baymax, which was my during my 1A term, yeah, I was really interested in software and AI. Yet at the same time, I was also really interested in making medical robots and stuff that could help doctors in the field, you know, stuff like that. So for a while, I was kind of stuck because I really didn't know what to, you know, start making because like what I was interested in was like a very wide broad spectrum that being software, AI, medical robots, like where would you even start with that? But luckily, I knew that also leveraging what you already know will help you at least get the ball rolling when it comes to projects and design teams and in order to, you know, further grow your skills. Now, I did say that I had like zero 
engineering experience from high school but like i wasn't completely experienceless so during my a levels on top of the courses that i already took that being chemistry mathematics and physics i also took a bunch of coding courses on youtube and on some other websites where i learned languages like python and c plus plus those were the those were the major two that i really focused on because they were industry standard is what everybody was eventually going to be using when it came to ai and data manipulation and and stuff like that so then i figured since i technically already did have a bit of software experience with those two languages and i am interested in software and ai yet also you know those other fields how can i combine the skills that i have now and use them to translate what it is that i want to do later into into a project that i can complete now that's when the idea for a targeted ai application showed up you know one that was actually meant to help doctors in the field with uh, stuff like data analysis collection of symptoms whatever else doctors need help with but also one that could work in the home for example like if you had an abrasion on your forearm or a slight cut you would just ask it hey blank blank ai i have this issue what is it that i need to do and then eventually the idea of talking white robot spawned in my head again now technically from the show baymax isn't ai specifically he's a robot that has some ai capabilities but i suspect tadashi built him with some sort of algorithm but i mean he he's pretty smart he might as well be ai at this point so then i thought huh okay why don't i just make a, a baymax ai that's able to listen to you speak you don't have to type in prompts think and then also regurgitate or like tell you what it is that you need to do whilst also continuously listening to your feedback and what your problem is and that's it that's when the idea showed up and i was like okay let's start with that now that i had an idea on what it is that i wanted to build i just needed a starting point i had gotten pretty used to coding stuff like programs and apps like snake or paddleball or you know other pretty basic stuff like that on python and uh, c++ but i had never actually built an ai application i decided to do a bit of research on youtube and sure enough i found that a couple of people had already attempted and built their own ai applications but the thing is that they weren't really what i was looking for a lot of them didn't really document on how they did it um they just said that they did it and that was pretty much it you know like i i needed somebody to teach me how to do these things i was a beginner when it came to ai applications and how to integrate ai features into the things that you're building i needed i needed somebody to like guide me through there eventually though i did find a youtube video detailing on how you can make ai assistance using apis on a channel that i actually frequent which is pretty surprising seeing as like i didn't look there first freecodecamp.org it's a coding channel that basically teaches you how code works and syntax like like offers beginner level courses to intermediate level courses it's where i learned this stuff in the first place but yeah anyway it went into detail on how to develop um ai assistance through apis now for those who really don't know what apis are that's okay you don't need to know what apis are to understand this video at least to some extent you can just understand them as applications programming interface which is basically just a set of instructions that allows software to communicate and share information be, uh, between each other pretty sure that you can see where this is going now that you have such a tool on your hands this isn't going to be an in-depth video on how exactly apis work or what they are if you're looking for something like that then i would highly recommend that you either check out free code camp yourself i'll probably put a link to their youtube video in the description or in the comments or if you're interested in a more detailed documentation of how i started and eventually got to baymax you can read more of that on my blog i'm gonna try to make sure that faces my monitor 
her. If I look back at the view and see that you can't see anything, I'm, I'm just probably gonna like maybe maybe screen record my my monitor and just put it up while I explain whatever the heck I'm talking about next. So once I went through the video, I figured out that like this whole coding and AI assistant thing was actually pretty modular, kind of like how you would code a normal function in Python or something. I don't know why I thought this would be way more difficult than than it actually is. The code itself is pretty modular. It's it's kind of just just reliant on a bunch of functions that work together in a constant loop and basically feed each other information until it reaches its end condition. The end condition being that you a either clicked the X on Baymax's face or rather the X on Baymax's interface, or you just said the keyword of goodbye or bye or whatever it is that I coded as that I coded as the kill switch for for the operation. So I'll just give you a basic rundown on how it works in the back end so that you can understand how Baymax actually listens to you, thinks and responds. Once you actually like understand the workflow, I'm sure that it, I'm sure it won't be that difficult. So once you'd gone through that video, you basically would have built an AI application on your computer that allows you to send requests to the open AI assistant and receive information back based on what it is that you requested. Now that would have been good enough for a first year's engineering project resume, but then I thought that I had already been developing Baymax for a month and I could probably push the project to be just a little bit more impressive. That's when I started tweaking my code and figuring out how to add little things to make Baymax seem more Baymax-like. I wanted to figure out how to make him listen to you, how to make him speak, how to make him continuously ask you for requests. So at first, I started with um, a basic SST function so that Baymax could actually hear what you say and take it in as a request. So once that was built, technically Baymax could hear you since an SST function is just taking your speech to text. It, it's in the name SST. It would take what you said as a request. And all that was left to do was make a TTS function or a text-to-speech function that takes the response from your app and transfers it into speech. That's giving Baymax a voice now. I almost forgot to mention that I also needed to add uh, his GUI, that being the graphical user interface, or just BMX's face to make it more BMX-like, because otherwise it would just sound like every other generic talking bot. But I did run into a problem, simply because of the nature of Python. Basically, Python is a modular coding language. That being, one function cannot begin unless the previous one has ended. And once all the functions in your script have ended, the whole program itself shuts down. If the GUI ran before the code, the code or BMX's brain and ears and mouth wouldn't work. But if I ran BMX's brain, ears and mouth before the GUI or his face, we wouldn't see his face at all. So again, I had to do some research and figure out how to solve this bug because I was pretty sure that you could. And that's when I ran into this other this other YouTube video that taught me that I can parallel process functions through a method called threading. I don't think I'll go over threading in this video again because you know, technically this isn't supposed to be a technical video. I'll probably just put the video or an article to for you to figure out what threading is down in the description if you're if you're if you're interested in that. But just understand that it's basically parallel processing and this allowed me to actually run Baymax's face or the GUI and the back end that being, you know, his brain, ears, mouth, etc. And at this point, I started asking myself if Python was actually a better coding language than C++. Because I did not, because I did not believe that C++ could actually handle something like this. So, Baymax was basically finished. We could see his face. He could speak to us and ask for a request. He could take your request via you speaking to him. He could process the request and come up with an answer. And he could spit the answer back to you through his text-to-speech function. Was he perfect? No. Was he good enough to throw into my portfolio? Most definitely. 
honestly if it were up to me i would work way more on baymax than i did but the problem is that it was kind of this project was kind of leaking into the time that i needed to spend on the next semester because like you saw from the timeline that even even after the 4th of january which is when school here usually starts i kept working on developing baymax so i believe for what for what he is now and the purposes that he needs to fulfill i think it's a pretty good project did he cause me problems absolutely especially the sleepless nights but did i have fun most definitely so i'd like to hear what you think of the bot that i made do you like baymax do you hate him what would you change about him if you could i'd really like to hear what you guys have to say in the comments if you made it this far into the video then clearly you like what i do here so i humbly ask that you like subscribe share to your friends who you think would appreciate stuff like this and i'll see you in the next video bye goodbye goodbye have a good day